God, the paranoid parents of 1983 were correct. These tabletop games will transform us into serial killers. At least that's what my satanic panic neighbors told me. They may have confused this film with a documentary. It's the movie that shows you how important it is to read the age limit and the directions of your D&D game, or else you might get killed, or possessed, or something in this. Dungeons and Dragons wasn't on my radar growing up, so neither was the movie Skullduggery. So I'm going to join my neighbors in assuming this is exactly what it was like to play the game in the 80s. Or maybe it's about something else. Who knows? The box covers and posters all suggest different things. Could be Sexy Hamlet, Full Moon Videos Donnie Darko, a tape of my damn nephew's piano recital, or a Dragon's Lair movie? Excellent. Or is it their first draft on the Mega Man cover? This Canadian film was directed and co-written by Oda Richter, whose only other credit is something called Oklahoma Smugglers, the most 1977-sounding title of 1987. If that's even the director's real name, it sounds suspiciously like saying, Oh, director! The co-writer, Peter Whitman, would later direct the killer dog movie Play Dead. He knows I'm playing dead! He knows I'm playing dead! This is a double feature I would also enjoy. Say what you will about Skullduggery, and believe me, there's a lot. <laughs> At least it shows some love to media home entertainment. When I grew up going to the video store, that was a sign of quality! Especially when compared to the music that happens next. The posters were wrong. It's got a TV cop show theme. And yes, it has lyrics. say tearing up my mind, I say this theme is blowing my mind. You won me over, song. This should be every commercial jingle for a magic game. I can see what's in your head. You know what's in my head. If this were the band playing in every other scene in the big score, that would have been a five-star movie. Oh yeah, that song screams 14th century. The movie is approachable to anyone no matter what games you play. Diabolos nos adjuvet, so the devil help us. And I'm already lost. Yes, hide the poison microchip in the apple. Nice of the costume designers from Excalibur to loan our character Merlin's wardrobe. Take your time, 95-minute movie. Let me see every draining second of whatever you're doing because it's lit so dark. Ah, okay, got it. They're worshipping the god of Court Jester's puppet. Alright, folks, we're set. We'll do the theme from Camelot as our opening. Okay, fine, we'll do Music of the Night instead. Adam is given the choice to play or die. Oh, well, the death card is good, though, right? That's what I learned from The Simpsons, so choose something else. But beware. One of the fruits is poisoned. Uh, what? Uh, could you say that again? I was, uh, distracted. Who is Adam? Is he a king? A prince? Is this a palace waiting room? He picks the apple, I guess.
Will you just die already? I think she got impatient and just stabbed him. Then Merlin puts a spell on the queen's unborn child and his descendants. He at least acknowledged her. I didn't even notice her sitting there. Now we're caught up to Trottleville, USA, 1982. But this is from 1983 in film. Our lead is also named Adam. Well, that's convenient. I wouldn't have noticed it's the same actor. But I do recognize the Santa Claus's Wendy Crewson here as Barbara. You're gonna want her expertise on your side. She was also in Mazes and Monsters. I should stop talking. I don't know what direction this conversation is going in. The strangest thing happened to me today. We were in the operating room. I reached for the scalpel, and suddenly it was a dagger. Get to the part where you killed your patient. It seems their favorite role-playing game is infiltrating reality. It's hard to say where the game begins or life ends. Really? I hope that when you play, you dress up just like this. Let's go to the better costume department. And can the music guy wait outside? Good. You look good, Mrs. Sullivan. But you need uh, a little tiara to make the image more regal. Please don't break into song! Are we done here yet? Can we get ready for our night of Cones of Dunshire? Can you at least turn the light up a little bit? I'm dripping pizza sauce all over my pants. Their master will properly judge these characters. You got 180 IQ. 18 stamina. And a 7 charisma. Those words describe no one here. The doll is the most notable character. So, this is a comedy, right? Huh, where the hell are we now? Meanwhile, in the manager of the porn theater's office. Oh, are we cutting back to the game? Not even gonna give us a hint about whatever the hell that was? This game is so dry, I'm begging for a sitcom comic relief. <coughs> Holy smoke! I hope you're not barbecuing my daughter. Phenomenal line reading, sir. You get all the charisma points. The creeper points go to someone else. You will outfit the boys and Barbara will give a hand to the girls. Well, can I give a hand to the girls, too? Anybody else need a ride? Mm -hmm. Only if I can sit with Barbara in the back seat. I'm getting a hunch that you want to bang Barbara. So, this can't be serious. I mean, it has a dun-dun-dun! <laughs> By George Talent Show? No! And I keep seeing this as Tromaville and not Trottleville. Tromaville has the far superior sailors putting on their own lipstick. There's one act I came here to see. Simcoe the Magician is played by Jim Coburn. He was new kid in town, Tim Stevenson, in the far superior 1983 film Screwballs. This does have some similarities with an 80s sex comedy. Like the shot of the two grown-ass men fighting over who gets to look in the peephole of the girls' room. And like Screwballs, it also has a scene of magic blowing off a girl's clothes. But anyways, let's skip to the movie's premiere. Uh, Harvey Frank, and uh, it's my pleasure to be your handsome MC for the evening. This whole movie is if someone's sweaty, clammy palms were a film. Simcoe truly is the greatest magician in town. He can change a white flower to a red flower with just the power of editing. And holy shit, the flower crapped itself! Let's hope the next act is a comedy act. Hey, Barbara, wanna see why they call me BJ? <laughs> Not a bad opener, but what's your closer? Wanna watch me suck a greyhound bus through a straw? He laughs through his sexual inadequacy. Get back to the magic act! Hopefully no one in the audience will see the cut before the inside of the box changes. Then they'll figure out his magic! Isn't this supposed to be about a game that turns someone into a killer? They spent too much money on this talent show and not enough money on security for the ladies' room. For Christ's sake, move that gorgeous ass before you miss your cue. Wait a minute, now Jerkovsky from Screwballs is in this too? My god, the show is right. This being a Screwballs reunion does indeed make the film on par with Shakespeare. 
Let's take a break so I can guess what other Screwballs alumni are in this. I'll figure it out. All of my episodes are filmed with me looking at a Screwballs poster. At TNA High, the Screwballs only have one thing on their mind. Quit <laughs> Screwballs, the nuts who always score. What were you doing in the girls' restaurant? Screwballs, where homework takes on a whole new meaning. It's coming in junior. Screwballs, they did are. Starts Friday at the Midtown on Chestnut between 15th and Broad and surrounding area theaters. Check local listings. We're back to what if Michaela Suave's stage fright was just the actors impatiently drinking a beer backstage and the characters never spoke words before. What is that? That is a fig leaf. Oh, can we smoke it? Well, talk to the horny guards if you want some drugs. The play that they're doing has more of a plot than the actual movie. And I'm pretty sure Adam can't even see, while the other may be Santa Claus. Oh, ho, ho, is my ex-wife here? It's my weekend to take our son to the North Pole. Is that doll supposed to be sinister? It's like the Saw doll was simply one at a Chuck E. Cheese. I think the magician is also supposed to be scary. Ha, well, joke's on you. I can't see anything with this on my face. But what about the killer from Pieces? <laughs> No time for that. That's the end of that cutaway. Adam is still going insane from the embarrassment of Mom making his Judge Dread costume. Oh, right, and uh, Adam's evil now. Because, um, family curse, and then centuries later playing this game. Even these chases are slapsticky. I've never seen what is clearly a comedy sold so hard as a straight horror film. His mask is in his way so much he accidentally shoots a mirror. Pick something else to wear. The actor, Tom Haverstock, was in Terror Train. There were plenty of masks in that one. Tough crowd here. There's no choice but to work blue. Ah, the wonder of Italy. How one country can turn out such tiny little cars and such enormous women. <laughs> Am I right? Grade schoolers in the front row? <laughs> Hello? Is this thing on? It's so dependent on showing every aspect of the talent show, I'm expecting it to be a Santo movie. Now get out there, girls, and shake that moneymaker. The principal wants a good show, damn it! The hell? Was he just standing in the corner? How did no one see Stroking Pete? He left too soon. Someone's getting a rub down. What in the hell are you doing in here, you lecherous creep? Right? You have to be an employee to give us a good slap on the ass. Meanwhile... Forget about that. We're invested in the talent show. I just don't know. The Lord forbade us to eat the fruits from this tree. Mm, not feeling this performance. Adam is gonna use his evil magic to make her reactions and line delivery feel more genuine. Hey, how are you? Have you seen Simcoe? I'm supposed to get a ride from him in the box. I can't find him, and Game Master Adam Scott is giving me the creeps. Can't wait to see what the next performance is. There was an 18-year-old girl going into convulsions and dying of a heart attack before my very eyes. I am a nurse and there was nothing I could do about it. Oh, I guess we're done with the talent show. We couldn't show the girl dying from the snake, so let's just describe it. Scenes like this are way more important. Hi, we're Mr. and Mrs. Bull. Can you show us where we can find some bunny costumes, please? Um, yeah, we'll get you a bat pussy costume. It's more appropriate. And don't mind the sex offender we brought in. He ain't hurting nobody. By the way, their last name is Bull. That way, this line can happen. Oh, come on, Barbara. They're all full of bull. Did he say bull? I believe he did, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother with all the murder and possession when there's the far more intriguing story of the bull's fetishes? Well, how do we look? Very realistic. Not what I was expecting from the box cover. And sir, face it, you're very bad at these puzzles. You've been working on this for 18 hours. So Adam decides he should see a fortune teller. Excellent. That'll eat up plenty of time in the movie. 
May I see your driver's license? And we are going to go through every step of this reading. She knows his father's name, who has been dead for 18 years, and that he fell off of a swing when he was a kid. Now he is ready to put his hand in the firebox from Phantasm. I'm guessing the cards she's showing him are bad. I don't know. I can't read a single one of them. Maybe that's why it inserts the death card, which again, I'm told isn't a bad thing. Except for maybe the fortune teller, then the card's a bad sign. Or a good sign, like settle in for this baffling joke. Hold it. Hands above your head. Now, put your hands behind your head. If you're wondering why we can't see the cop, it's because that voice was coming from the cop show playing behind him. That joke was so stupid, yet inspiringly brilliant. Then it just gives up on using its own jokes. We are too wild and crazy nights. So let's quote Saturday Night Live instead. I forgot the film was about role-playing games. Oddly, this is the least interesting part of the movie, and it's supposedly the main plot, despite barely being in it so far. The scenario they're given is that Barbara is a nymph, and a sorcerer hires the others to kill her for a hundred thousand pieces of gold. Mission accepted. Now we got a game. Oh no! Whatever the hell that means. I guess it means he has to kill the sorceress dressed in white, which for the sake of this sequence is a nurse who's like Barbara, but isn't Barbara. It'll be very easy to sneak around this place. Oh, don't stop, don't stop. Oh. I have questions, but not about the banging. It's about why is there a wall of tools? What kind of hospital is this? And don't you try to distract me, movie! If you have any information, phone Doctor, you scared the wits out of me. I still want to know about the tools! We're only halfway through, and that's a bad thing. I want this movie to never end. The movie itself is full of a hundred thousand pieces of gold. It's an endless source of WTF batshittery. I wouldn't call this a parody, but it's a horror film that happens to be set in a parody universe, if that makes sense. That's kind of brilliant. It practically turns into a medical soap opera. It is that kind of randomness that makes it work, because the death scenes are really lame. Which is why they have to follow it up with this. Valium, don't it, Doctor? <laughs> Excuse me. Guy in a gorilla suit banging in the closet. Makes sense. The hospital is the most dangerous place here. Especially on the injury by slapstick ward. Slipping in the water helped Adam find a new friend. Turn around, show me your ass. Classy. I got a buddy I can set you up with. So the nurse decides to take him home to iron his pants. Just in time, it's getting sinister. The doll is watching. Someone take that to the lost and found. Good thing Adam isn't full of every red flag in the book. I see no problem seducing this man who is hiding beneath some sheets like he's building his own fort. But he hasn't even tried to bang her yet. That can only mean one thing. I know it's kind of a delicate question, but are you gay? No, I'm not gay. I just feel uncomfortable. I can't tell you how many crowded elevators I've been on where I've said, I'm not gay, I'm just uncomfortable. So she's going to do her own role playing. Let's pretend that I'm the mummy and you're the good little boy. No, no, not the kind of RPG I'm into! Why am I watching a porn version of Rain Man? That is, if he tried killing her by spraying an iron at her. My god, you seemed so normal! How could I not see this coming? And don't run through the steam, he'll use that to track you! I'm sure someone will be in the nearby church to help. Damn it, 
Reverend Liberace, help me! She must have been banging on that window for a while. It's already starting to get dark out. The clouds have summoned with the power of rock! Having the mascot to a theme restaurant is what every funeral needs at 7 o'clock at night. And watch out for the grieving old woman who's only there to have her flowers trampled. They think it's a Rolling Stone concert. Oh no, Rolling Stones, you're trying to give Jeff from Rocket's Your Decision a heart attack. First, Satan's card game turned the woman into birds, and now you're playing Sympathy for the Devil. This really did kinda have to be a comedy, because if it was played straight, it would read exactly like a satanic panic film. Hell, it has to send out for more murder victims. Ah, uh, yes, you're looking for something medieval, possibly. 14th century, worn by women of the court. Ah, that goes along with this movie perfectly. You'll do. Maybe you'll even give me ideas for what weapons to use. She was wearing a costume just like this, and she killed several people. With a hat pin, like this. Okay, okay, just, uh, keep stabbing away at that dummy. <laughs> Jeez, which one of us is the killer here? I can't kill you with that hat pin now, you dulled it! Ah, much better representation of the box cover. Ugh, this suit smells like a bull's balls! Did he say bull? I believe he did, honey. <laughs> <laughs> the box cover was still better. This is another very lame death scene. The game sessions keep giving him inspirations on who to kill next. I suppose, I don't know, I think they might be in a cult or something. This is an important scene, though. How do I get in? Say, Skullduggery. Sure, if we just say Skullduggery, it'll make sense as to why that's the title. So he uses Skullduggery as the password to get into another costume party. And the doll and the symbol are on the wall. There's either danger or dancing afoot. <laughs> Not feeling it, DJ. Put on the good stuff. <laughs> There, the theme to Skullduggery. That'll make the orgy look less stupid. What's the second password, though? Could you please deplate your tits? Sure, that'll do. That'll get you into the secret screening of Porky's Revenge. Now just make sure you're all dancing like there isn't actually a song playing and we're putting the theme in in post. Perfect! I'm having major getting it on and driller a sexual thriller flashbacks from this. Only if they didn't want to stain the shag carpeting any more than they already were, so he's nice enough to take the bloodshed to the staff kitchen of the orgy. He can even add more to the costume. I want to thank this group of ducks for kindly taking over the soundtrack duties. I always thought Eyes Wide Shut needed far more gorilla costumes and a peek into what happens when someone leaves their hot pocket in the oven too long. Let's take another break. They're going to be cleaning up the scorched marinara and roller skates for hours. Stay tuned for the thrilling Dungeons and Dragons. Look out! Right after Saturday's Super K. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> We're back, and it just occurred to me, what was the deal with the evil magician? Is he ever going to come back? Did that really have nothing to do with anything? Okay, he's offered a chance to join their cult, and all he has to do is drink this cup of boiling hot Pepsi free. Hopefully nothing breaks the mood if we get a little closer. <laughs> You're not supposed to see that I lifted that from a KB Toys! Get rid of the witnesses! In what is really the only death scene in the movie I like. Did he bring all of these costumes with him? He did a good job of stuffing that suit of armor in his bag that he brought. Good thing the killer was here. The party, of course, goes from zero to rapey. You know, I've had my eye on you all night, girl. Let's get that Hawaiian ass of yours over here. <laughs> Boys, boys, none of you look like you're really into her. Oh, wait, no, he killed them! Just as we got an appearance from Kent Duders! He was Brent from Screwballs! Both are Canadian films, I guess. It could just be the bridge to the actual Screwballs follow-up Loose Screws. He's in yet another costume now, finally learning his lesson as he remembered his own terror train experience points. 
This is like the climax for Miss 45 if it was about some geek pissed at He-Man's cancellation. It's all connected to the role-playing game in the loosest of terms, like they had a lot of ideas for jokes and some set pieces and connected them with this game session that gives him ideas of where to go next. Like this chase scene, shot in what looks like security cam vision. Whoopsie! That means our getting it on heroes are now at this costume party filming things. Maybe they can play back the footage and show us how when she walks to the stairway to heaven, a body is hung up that falls at just the right moment. I don't know why there is such a big build-up to this. I can't even see what's happening, let alone if she died or not. She's all right. She's just in shock. <laughs> Graphic. I barely noticed the pervy janitor walking in the background. Is he moonlighting it, peeping through holes all over town? I'm actually glad we're seeing a live performance in this one, because this is lit better than that chase scene. They charged up all the bulbs for this one. <laughs> Let me see if I can follow along with this. In this quest, you must walk through the lighted doorway, which will cause an exploding cross, and freeze everyone in place as they have no reaction. But as for the puppet... Did that kill it? All of that for him to, I don't know, drown her in a fish tank? Is there any smart person here? Give me the police. And hide the butt plugs that we're using to smuggle cocaine! The twist is that the puzzle man was, oh my lord, it was some guy this whole time! I think it's the cult leader, maybe, I'm not sure. Could be the janitor again, just freely jerking off on all the bodies in front of the police. Plus, I'm not kidding, the leader's name is Dr. Evil, using his cunning magic to find out who the killer is and tell the police. I happen to know who the murderer is. And how do you know? He left his business card in the dressing room. <laughs> sure. I know that this only has a 2.6 on IMDb, but <laughs> I love this crazy-ass movie. Look, the death scenes are terrible. They're so lame, they kind of make you curious how lame the next one will be. The film could be satire of D&D &D and satanic panic, but I don't know if I'd say it's that clever. It's more like a zany comedy disguised as a horror movie that uses role-playing games as a backdrop. Or like it's having fun at various things that caused moral panic back then, like role-playing games, slasher films, and raunchy comedies. The jokes are out of left field and so staggering that it crosses over being bad and comes around to being original. Very, very few people have the insanity to write a movie like this. It's hard to have a bad comedy that's perfect for a bad movie night, but this fits that bill. It's entertaining as hell, and the jokes are so random that they're funny just for being unpredictable. I could see the movie being ripe for a remake, but how could you top the police's reaction to finding that Adam killed one of their own? Nice. I'll get him. Nice. Way to let yourself be shot with an arrow, dumbass. It's not too late into the movie to add silly characters like this. I'm going after that son of a bitch. No, don't. He might kill you. Yeah, you're right. Screw this. Let's go home. Oh, wait. Uh, can we just start shooting? Holy cow, we can. Let's just shoot him a bunch of times. There, he's dead. But his biggest magic trick? Summoning the hanging puppet, which is then inside of Adam's suit of armor. Oh, movie, now you're just making stuff up. It's gonna be one hell of a session tonight. Now what have we learned, people? We can keep playing, we just have to go home and say our prayers afterwards so Jesus will forgive us. Oh, too late, Adam's spirit is among us. Nine, nine, nine? We're tired of you always being Dungeon Master! Let someone else have a turn, goddammit!
And we need to shoehorn in a final twist. So he was the puzzle man? Was he also the orgy leader? Wikipedia synopsis says he is. You better explain yourself, movie. Forget it, there's an Old West saloon across the street. Let's head over there and buy some ale and a prostitute. That movie made no sense. It felt like it was constantly making up shit. There were no rules. It needed trimming. I don't know what the end game for Adam was. And supporting characters just disappear from it. And yet, I absolutely recommend this film. I'm gonna tell everyone this is the final season of Stranger Things. But we need to brighten up the camera work a little bit. Thank God we've got a shot on Shittio movie on hand. So coming up next, let's talk about another low-budget 1983 horror film, Sledgehammer. And now Mom and Dad want a cup of good, satisfying coffee. That's the kind we serve, full of flavor and satisfaction. We've got a whole other movie to talk about now, which I'm sure will have plenty of material, but I still have questions. For instance, what's the deal with the tic-tac-toe game being played on the man's back all throughout that film? Can't get distracted, the next film was shot on video. It'll be hard to top the last one of those I watched, which was called the worst horror film ever made. But this particular one, Sledgehammer, is very important to the genre. It's an early shot on video entry, with it being 1983, and while the 82 Boarding House is supposedly the first SOV horror film, Sledgehammer has the distinction of being the first to be released direct to video, as Boarding House did have a theatrical release. It's got some notable names, too. It was the first film for the late writer-director David A. Pryor, director of Killer Workout, Invasion Force, and Man Killers, which featured Sally from Getting It On. It all connects. For instance, David A. Pryor also co-wrote Dancing It's On. Pryor would often work with his brother, actor Ted Pryor, who stars in this film too, and was the star of standout titles like Hard Case and Fist, Future Zone, Raw Nerve, Maximum Breakout, and oh yeah, I remember this Shannon Tweed movie from the Skinamax days. They gotta get that video font in there, but there's at least a killer logo. Hey, don't destroy it! That was half our budget! Well, there goes the catering. If you look through these in-camera effects, you can see its stars. Geraldo, an obvious narc who will take away their weed. Linda Ronstadt, Johnny Mathis, and Howard the Duck? Never thought I'd say this, but I kind of like the opening music in this shot on Chidio movie. Bummer, it's the only one he worked on. The movie will come together, though. It's got an editor named Cutter, and the blood and guts themselves did the effects. I am concerned about the cinematography, though. Will this all be shot in crime scene reenactment vision? and with skullduggery featuring a villain who puts together a puzzle, and this one being about a kid who kills his mom, then years later kills some partiers, put them both together and you do have pieces. You don't need to be a shot on video movie to know that if the horror movie opens with this shot, someone's about to die in that house, and... Given that it's an SOV film, that establishing shot is half of the running time. Eventually, at the 30 minute mark, it zooms in. Things aren't going well between mother and son. She locks him in the closet, where it can't just be the shot of the house that pads it out. Let's put the action-packed shot of closing the door and locking it in super slow motion. Fred Williamson in the big score is inspired by the ingenious padding of this film. Sure, we can hold on the shot of the door. We'll slowly, very slowly zoom in so it's technically moving. And I'm still not sure that I'm not watching a porno. So what do you think? Sexy enough for you? 
Oh yeah, I love the mom's bowling league chic. Low budget Jonathan Price is very turned on by this. Come here you, we are gonna make beautiful Sears stock portraits together. They're each cheating on their spouses, and the son is nice to bring mom the sex toys. Is it just gonna pause whenever a sledgehammer is shown? I am, in fact, rooting for the sledgehammer, though. I've had my fill of stumbling across the vice principal's sex tape. Now Mom knows that if she locks him in the closet next time, at least give him a Game Boy. Thanks for padding this out more, Mom, with your long reaction, but you could at least run a little bit. And he destroyed Mom and her lover's gazpacho dinner. It got so sexy here, it melted the tape. It's ten years later, and they say Texas Chainsaw Massacre feels like a documentary, so this one feels like family home movies to a dude ranch. Here's where we meet our heroes. Yep, I'm ready for them all to die. When I sold the film rights to Class of 86, I should have double-checked to make sure it wasn't shot on Memorex HS. We'll keep this shot going long enough for someone to make a dick joke. People in 80s slashers and comedies thought about their own dicks a lot. You're really gonna show the whole unloading of the van, aren't you? Thank you. Changing up the shot deserves a little slow motion. I love the driver, though. Um, yeah, can I leave? I have another ride I need to get to. If you're gonna take this long, at least give me five stars. This movie looks like the big chill if they all got together to honor the passing of McGruff. Go back to the driver again, please. I like that guy. He got lost on his way to the sex joke. He'll pull up the map and try that one again. This couple seems to be having some problems, and that's Ted Pryor as Chuck, who has already perfected his action lead bod. What's not to love? Now, come on, promise me you're gonna have a good time. I mean it. I'm gonna give you country noogies. Come on, little sweet little old, please. Okay, he needs some work in the romantic lead department. I really hope this doesn't turn into a Sasquatch film. I won't know which one the Bigfoot is. Just like I hope it's not an infomercial for a love song compilation. Experience the music that will make you fall in love all over again. If You Leave Me Now by Chicago, Lady by Styx, and War Pigs by Black Sabbath. I sure hope they stay together, or at least not spill their can of Schlitz beer. Look, over there, the next cut. Let's get to it fast. Baby, this is going to be the best Jeff Foxworthy show we ever done tailgated. At one point, he gets bored and just balances the beer on her head. Wait till you see what I do with a Twizzler in my dick. Each suspenseful scene will be shot in butt crack vision. Huh, why did we choose this vacation spot? Guys, there will obviously be a killer here. Eh, God damn it, there's got to be a damn Yankees cassette around here somewhere. I don't know what happens here, but there's a pause, so I guess it's important. It means let's get this party started, I guess. I'm not drunk enough to laugh at this. Hoo-hoo, this is the most hoppin' work party yet. Hey guys, I sold ten shower heads this week. I deserve another beer and a raise. What is this friends group? Either they look like Dad's Golf League or a knockoff of King Frat. <laughs> no, not Animal House. I said knockoff of King Frat. Come on, bro, you can do this. Chug that old style. Gotta say, it's nice that when the Buttercream Gang went off to college, they figured out how to party. The acting is like every drinking party in a dare PSA. Look at this. She's gonna smell like the McDLT box for the rest of her life. And Chuck is having cold feet about the whole commitment thing. Look, Joni, if we're gonna stay together, one of us has to have a different hairstyle. It's like I'm making out with myself, which I only like half the time. In fact, throw me another beer. I'll write a song about it.
Not bad, but lose the farting score. Hey, I just realized I only brought my Wonder Bread shirt. Guess I'll have to wear this the whole time. Let's take a break. The cameraman is going to be lost in these bushes for a while. This may take a few minutes. And if you got your VHS camcorder and fake body parts, you're ready for a horror sleepover. That's why you need to pre-order this Cinema Snob Doki Makura pillow from our friends at Loading Crew Crafts. Pick up yours today by clicking the links in the comments and in the description, and you'll sleep comfortably before getting that sledgehammer to the head. We're back, people. I am not sold on the SNL 1985 cast. This movie would stand around and cheer on someone wiping their ass with tinfoil. How long was this script, and what percentage of it was the word woo? Damn it, I like smelling like Miracle Whip, not mayonnaise. Defend my honor! Guys, come on. We just raised enough money to get the catering back. Oh, this shoot is not going well. Hold on, boys. Hold on. I think someone may have put roids in the cottage cheese. <laughs> I've never rooted for the killer more. Look what they're doing to his house. Just like the pie fight from the great race. Only if the race was who gets to the Casey's two blocks away to pick up a pack of Newports first. Get to the part where we find out the killer is the ex-murderer. Look, the boom mic from Deadly Force is right there. Also, this had a boom mic? It's the longest Sega CD cutscene I've ever seen. When do I hit the button to exit the killers through a trapdoor? I'll give it this. Melodramas and shot-on-video movies are the best way to see what the 80s really looked like, and not the glamorized version. Back then, if you walked around in a towel, there will automatically be horror music playing behind you. Not to mention the sound effects. Thank God, the bombs from the day after are dropping. But every friend group needs a Shelly. In this film, it'll be this guy. I'm not sure what his name is, so I'll just call him Shelly. I would rather stay with this couple, honestly, over the others. God, like watching competing managers of a Lone Star Steakhouse flirt. Good, it's the house again. We're gonna hold on this just as long. It's nighttime out. It's way different lighting. Keep it going. I need to know for sure this is the house from the beginning. They are now busting out the kid's record player. Who wants to listen to Ernie keeping Bert awake because he's afraid of the dark? This is gonna get wild. No, we are most certainly not waiting for an orgy to happen. These characters are if you used french fry grease to sculpt a person. We're 30 minutes in, let's have a seance for no reason other than it will make horror things happen. It's a seance, stupid. What? It's a seance. A seance. That's what I said. A scene. Give it about 30 more minutes of drawn out dialogue and then the seance will happen. He tells them the story of the opening scene, and if you forgot, we'll go ahead and show you again. A lot of stuff happened since then. It even keeps the slow motion shots too. Hell, it's replaying the whole scene! Can we just get Paul in here to tell us the story about Jason? He cuts to the chase far sooner and was a way better storyteller. Look how riveted they are. On the plus side, this is the most quiet they've ever been. They had to hold perfectly still. It's the same shot from the opening credits. Although one guy is still tweaking the hell out, he has a woo locked and loaded. They perform a seance to find out who killed the lovers. We know it's the Dean from the college, just get to it. Show yourself, demon killer! 
great. You just let out the dog. The sledgehammer killer had to show up. Madman Mars or Cropsy weren't returning their calls. He does not appreciate the prankster upstairs, playing sound effects that make the other idiots think there's a ghost talking to them. But anyway, in the same house, on the same night, here's another shot of the house. I wonder what they're doing now. Oh, drinking, of course! That ghost stuff really had you going, didn't it, Tuxedo? Me? Yeah. You were wondering about your pants. Bull. Did he say bull? I believe he did, honey. I miss the sophisticated, subtle humor and relatable character interactions of Skullduggery. The killer will teach him to do a terrible impression of his voice. How are they so full and drunk, yet they keep using half of it to dump on each other? When do we get to the games? We forgot categories and Trivial Pursuit. Guess charades will do. This is the longest beer commercial I've ever seen. Hang on, baby. Let me finish my true love first. <laughs> there. Now you can suck bits of sour cream and cheddar ruffles from my mustache. All right, guys, I'm tipped off. Remember, we need to get back early tomorrow. I got a PE class to teach. Guess this room is good enough to pass out in. Huh, how did the ketchup from the food fight make it all the way up here? I hate it when local TV commercials get too ambitious. Tell your boring sex life to hit the mattresses. Head on over to Big Sur Waterbeds on West Wabash Avenue. You've never had a night of beer-drenched passion if you haven't experienced it on the motion of the ocean. The prospect of a sex scene here is so terrifying, I thank God whenever a punishingly long shot of the hallway pops up. He has to tell someone about all the blood on the floor. Right? If he's dead, that means we'll all actually get a good night's sleep without any more pranks. Please, please, can we follow Fred Jones here and solve the mystery? Not only is there a love scene, it's in slow motion too. It makes the love scene in Mitchell look like body heat. Open the door faster, open the door faster, put a stop to this! It's like dry humping my anticipation NES game! Oh, thank God, I don't have to pour expired Billy beer in my eyes. They found the dead body, and I just found out his name is Joey. And the world has been saved from round two of lovemaking. Oof! Tell Daryl Hall I finally lost that loving feeling. Here we get our first good look at the killer. The brawny man took one look at their mess of food and thought, there's no way I'm cleaning that shit up. You're gonna learn to clean up after yourselves. I think he's a ghost who can turn into a younger version of himself? You idiot, you gotta save that for the end of part eight. Sledgehammer takes Manhattan. But now that they have one of his weapons, the important thing is they all stick together. I'm not talking to you, just shut it. You go to hell, we're talking about my life. Nobody, any of us. Mmm, it's the first slasher where it would be better if they all split up. Ted is gonna take care of all of them, even when it isn't an action flick. He's got the biggest guns of our leads. He'll punch an explosion right into the killer's chest. And the freeze frames and close-ups are even more serious. But first, let's get in a good power nap so we're nice and refreshed. I'll keep watch. Sure, I suppose we could just leave. But nah, we got a good deal on rent in this place. A very nice and spacious kitchen. I understand making the killer supernatural. I made shot on shittio movies before. You do kind of fall in love with discovering the dissolve cuts and using them to make someone disappear and reappear. We'll let them sleep a little longer. Show Chuck telling the story of the opening again. We will drag this movie kicking and screaming to the 84 minute mark. And just when you think that's over, the flashback will come back to again describe previous scenes to you for a third time. That way John can have a totally normal reaction to this. Hey, hey, wait. 
damn it, kid, open the door. Between you and me, we could make a fortune on America's Funniest Home Videos. Oh, and the killer can also make people teleport. Well, that really does one-up Jason's teleportation powers. Let's take another commercial break. He's gonna open the next door the old-fashioned way. Five minutes of slow motion. If you want to read more adventures of the van from the opening scene, come see us August 25th through 27th at Planet Funk Con in Davenport, Iowa. I'll be there all weekend with plenty of copies of my book, Class of 86 Design, plus DVDs of our own low-budget cinema as well. Get your tickets over at PlanetFunkCon.com. We're back, people. Give him a few more minutes. He ain't done opening the door yet. What horrors will be behind this door? My god, the skull from the poster of Skullduggery! And oh no, their spirits have been banished to one of those anti-rock and roll religious scare films! Damn you, war pigs! And he isn't a kid anymore. Eric Bogosian, you son of a bitch! How do I change him back to the kid? How do I change him back to the kid? Finally, they're using slow motion when something actually happens. Instead of, oh, there's a killer turning on a light switch. Fire up the slow motion and get some horror music in here. He ain't dead. There's 20 minutes left. They can get in at least 10 more establishing shots. As for John, best keep that beer good and warm in his memory. Ted's got this. Sledgehammer is no match for hard case and fist, unless there's a mildly locked door in the way, and deadly transition effects. No, we're too late. He ruined our favorite chair. You got a lot of explaining to do, kid. Okay, can we get another seance to explain what he said? I like when he tries to take the knife from the kid. Ow! That really hurt! Little bastard, you need some discipline! Hey, hey, don't sass talk me, boy! I'll punch you in the face! Ow! You have heavy fillings! Also, he's growing again. I would say, nice effects, but it's exactly what I'd do if I made this. And I'd especially give him the little-used Father Guido Sarducci mask. It's the only credit for the adult version of the killer, Doug Matley, but the kid, Justin Greer, has done some stuff, like choreographer on the Shrek musical, which is pretty cool. If this is gonna be my only movie, you better hold that shot on me for a long-ass time. I will be making the most of my screen time. Same with Joni, as it's also her only movie. Drag her scream out as long as you can. I hope the twist is it's just Adam Maitland, again trying to scare away the new residents of his house. Oh, but he didn't count on his slow motion being used against him. Ow! I have bad knee joints! All the doors are locked, so we can't draw it out with a hilarious Scooby-Doo hallway door chase. We're gonna last house on the left the shit out of this place. Just as I was about to make a joke about his David Hess mask. And just plug the damn thing in already! It's exactly what I thought Zack Snyder's student film would look like. To think, we all laughed about Ted's decision for the power nap earlier, but who's laughing now? He's back, fully refreshed, and ready to save the day at the last minute. He is the best one in the film. It's not even that he's great here, but you could see how he could get better the more experience he gets. It makes sense he'd have a B-movie career after this. Guess this is what took care of the killer. He's been stabbed and beaten multiple times, but using his own sledgehammer against him is what did it. I'm just kidding. You know it's gonna end on a sequel teaser shot. Where, of course, we get no sequel, but very, very long and drawn-out ending credits. Let's get out of here before he describes the opening scene again. You keep it going, slow credits. You're long enough to be its own sequel. There's always something heartwarming about watching these, and relatable if you've made movies on tape. It was shot in the director's apartment, all done in about a week. It was a great chance for friends to have a bit of fun with each other and stain the director's walls. 
But instead of having a lot in common with Skullduggery, it more so has stuff in common with the big score. Both have about 40 minutes of material, stretched to high heaven to get it full length. God bless you both, you did it. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go find the charger to give this here camera a bit of a jump. Because, well, it is only about one step above a VHS camcorder. We'll see you next time. Whoa, wait! Am I too late? Did he already talk about Skullduggery?